Today we're working on a Yamaha valve clearance check. <laughs> friends and welcome to Tom's Tinkering Adventures. Today I am working on a good friend of mine's uh, 2012 Yamaha WR450. Now, I really like the WR450 if anyone ever wants to know what I think is an amazing trail bike in the 450 class I would recommend the Yamaha WR450. Tim has had this 450 I think he bought it new or new-ish uh, it's a 2012 and he said he has hardly done anything to it just done oil changes and the bare necessities and uh, he wants to do a valve clearance check to make sure that that is good to go and a few other things but uh, we'll just do the video on the valve clearance check now this is the first uh, wr450 i have worked on that has fuel injection i usually work on the carbureted models so we're going to both learn a few things here you and i together I've already got the seat removed, just the two bolts in the back. I also already removed the side covers. There's a bolt right there, bolt there, and a bolt there, and they have like a little pocket deal here that slides off. You probably don't have to take them all the way off. You probably just take these two bolts off. And then, since this is a fuel-injected bike, it's got a fuel pump. And on this one, it is built into the tank. Now, I've already had this up and taken a look at it, you know, through the magic of video. This has already been done. I'll get you up here in the stand and kind of show you what everything looks like under here. In case you've uh, never taken the tank off of a WR450 with fuel injection. Oh, another thing on the uh, tank, there's two bolts up front, one on each side. that have to come out. So lift it up and then gently turn it to the left side, looking from the back. And then underneath here is the fuel pump. Now there is a white plug that goes straight up underneath. And then this black plug, which is plugged in right there. That's probably your fuel level sender. And then here's your fuel line that you have to remove. Let me see if I can get you zoomed in. Hold this with one hand, zoom in with the other. Probably not, let me try it here. There we go, a little bit of zoom action, so you can see a little bit better. So these are all pretty similar on fuel injected bikes. Usually this has like a clip or something that you have to pop off. Uh, I haven't looked too closely at this one, but this orange clip pops off in one form or another. There we go. And then the whole thing comes out. I don't know how well you saw that, apologize. But they have little got little places to squeeze on each side right there and then that comes off and that's just kind of your quick disconnect there's that piece all right so I'm already pretty happy uh, the last Yamaha I worked on was kind of a pain in the ass I gotta be honest um, it looks like they've changed a few things and you got a much easier access to the valve cover I used to have um, like a mount that went on the top of the valve cover you had to take off. So anyway, um, before we go any further, I'm gonna show I have removed the spark plug lead and I pulled it out and snaked it over onto this side over here. And I've removed this breather hose, which is right here, kind of shoved it out of the way. This plug, which is, uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's for hooking up a tuner or something. That kind of sits right in here. All you gotta do is pry this up a little bit and that pops out. And then I also have removed this wire plug that went up and around over here. Let me uh, reroute it for you, show you where it went. So that went up and around over here. So I unplugged it and then pinched the little plastic bits here, pulled it out. So now we have pretty unfettered access, I guess you would say. To the valve cover i'm not sure if i'm going to have to remove this bracket but if i do um, it's only two bolts there's one underneath right here and then similar on the other side so that may or may not have to come off to get this valve cover off but it looks like 
we may be able to sneak it on by. So I'm gonna loosen these two up and we'll see what happens. Valve cover is off. I did end up taking the bolts out of that bracket. It gave just a little bit more room and it came right up out of there. Nice, easy access in here. So now you wanna align your cams at top dead center. Now, I will always say RTFM, read the freaking manual. And the manual says to remove this inspection cover, look inside of there for the line. You can turn the engine over by removing this. There's a, a nut on the end of the flywheel. You can turn it over with that. Sometimes I also, like I did on this one, I just put it in gear. So I pop it up into like third gear and I just turn it with the back wheel. It makes it pretty easy. See the engine turning over there and then you can bump it back a little bit too if you have to. Now, what you're looking for on here is, it didn't help any, that little alignment dot right there. And there's one on the back on the intake cam. You can see it right there. Those should be parallel to the surface. So we're almost exactly where we need to be. And then looking in here, you can kind of see the uh, line in there. So as long as these are lined up parallel to the surface, we are legit. There we go. Bump it back. And you can be off just a tiny bit. I mean, you want to try to be as spot on as you can. But if you're off a little bit, it is not going to hurt things. There's the one on the back. Yeah, kind of hard to see. And now we're going to check our valves. So on a Yamaha, uh, interestingly enough, they have three intake valves and two exhausts. So we'll check the exhaust first. Oh yeah, right here, see that little nub sticking out? That's your automatic decompressor. That operates through this whole thing here. Centrifugal, centrifugal force. Oh, look at that. We, can, we can move it and you can see it going. So fun. Got the manual up over here. Intakes are 10 to 15 hundredths of a millimeter. And exhausts are 20 to 25. So let's check them. Okay, I think I got you in there pretty good. We're looking at the exhaust valves. And we're gonna check the clearance between the lobe of the cam and the exhaust um, valve bucket there. And let's see what I got here. There's a 20. 23 and a 25 millimeter. So we will check with the lowest one first. So you always want to check to see that you have clearance with the lowest one. And we do. And then we will go with the highest one next. If the highest one doesn't fit, or even if it just barely does, we're, we're, we're already good because we've already beat the minimum. There you go, and the maximum one doesn't fit. So um, basically what I like to do is try to find out what it is. So we already know that it's 20. So I guess we'll see if the 23 fits in there, which will put it right about in the middle of the range. And the 23 just about, I can force it in on that one. And it goes into that one pretty good. So I'd say that one's probably 0.22. Two, and this one's 0.23 millimeters. So what I'll, we'll do now is I'm gonna go record those. I had this envelope laying around, so I'm just writing it on this. I like to um, make up a little um, valve spec chart or whatever and give it to whoever I'm working on stuff for, just so they can keep it for their records. But I write what the uh, specifications are and then what they measure. So on the intake side, it's 10 to 15. Left, center, right. So I'll get those measurements Doing it the same way, uh, we're gonna come in it from the front to the back to measure those. I'll measure those, I'll let you know what we get. Each of the intakes was on the loose end of the spectrum, so they're all over 15 actually, just a little bit over. Now, a super picky person may want to adjust those. Let's say that you were using your uh, dirt bike for competition you'd probably want your valves towards the closer side of tight. I mean, if you're trying to eke out the very last bit of performance out of it, 
for a casual rider, I would set them on the loose side, honestly, because as you ride these bikes, the valves are hammering in and out, <laughs> in and out of the uh, valve seats in there. And what it is doing is it's going to eventually close up and you'll lose clearance. Now, the less clearance you have will make this bike harder to start, run a little bit hotter, this and that. So the loose side for a casual rider, I would recommend. So even though these are probably measuring 16, actually, um, I am going to recommend that we leave them. No reason to adjust them down to close this clearance. And the other problem with this, uh, with adjusting them, if you're just over, if this was wildly out, say it was 20 or 25 out, I would definitely adjust them. But the uh, biggest issue is that the valve shim sizes only can adjust in increments of five thousandths of an inch or five hundredths of an inch. Let's see, yeah, tenths, hundredths, or of a millimeter, I mean to say. So if the valve shim that's in there is, say, I would just throw out a number, uh, 200, and I throw a 205 in there to close up the gap, then we're going to go from, you know, the high side down maybe to the low side or closer to the middle or closer to the bottom. So if these are measuring at 16 and I add 5 to it, then it's going to be at 11. So it doesn't make sense to do it for the casual rider. And uh, i got to apologize. I was uh, expecting to possibly do a valve adjust here. I like not having to do the work, but I make these videos so that people can see how to... Uh, how to do the job so now you know how to do a valve check and this is something i highly recommend to people if you aren't feeling like a super competent mechanic but you're willing to do an oil change and um, you know brakes and that sort of stuff and you have a dirt bike like this by all means do the valve clearance check it's not hard to get to this point and if you check them and they're good then all you got to do is put the cover back on, hook the, you know, hook the wires back up, put the tank back on, and that's all stuff you should be able to do. And that'll probably save you, I think, my buddy said they were going to charge 125 or 150 just to do a check. And then they were going to double it if they had to do an adjustment. So if you get to this point and it needs an adjustment, well, you could call up your good buddy Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. You need to, uh, you know, call up one of your other riding buddies and Likely one of them is willing to help you out if you're not competent. But to get to this point, all you need is a basic set of hand tools and a feeler gauge set. And being able to read instructions or even watch some clown's video online. So just doing the check, very simple. Doing the adjustment, a little bit more involved, but honestly not terrible. I can understand if you're not comfortable taking pieces of your engine apart. You have to remove the cams to get to um, the valve shims and to perform the adjustment. So I can definitely feel you if you're uh, not comfortable doing that. But to do a valve check, very, very simple on a dirt bike like this. Let me get things uh, cleaned up a little bit and we'll bring you on back. So I went ahead and reinstalled the valve cover, breather hose, push this connector back onto this rail here, installed that rail, put this connector back up over here. Here's the spark plug lead. I'm gonna be changing out the spark plug, um, flush and drain the coolant and the brakes uh, front and back as well. That's for, uh, that's for me. No reason to make a video on that. Oh, my hat's always crooked. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. The uh, basics of doing a valve check. And like I said, um, I was hoping to do a, a video on valve adjustment, but um, you know what? It's okay if, if some of this mechanical stuff feels like it's out of your league because not everyone is comfortable at the same um, level as everyone else. You know, I honestly don't want to get my hands in and do heart surgery. And a doctor might bring his car over here for me to work on or his motorcycle. So it's understandable. But uh, don't be afraid to pick up your tools and try something you haven't tried before. Just always have an out, you know, have your buddies number on standby let them know and uh, if you need to have some refreshing beverages standing by it always makes it a lot easier if you're digging what i'm putting out give me a thumbs up 
Leave a comment down below if you would. I'd appreciate it. I like the feedback. Let me know what I'm doing right or what I'm doing wrong. And uh, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.